So Bill Elliott had a question about measuring and evaluating set on saws. Uh, he wants to know when is a set too great or not uh, specifically. When a digital measuring device is used, what's the appropriate measurement for a set? Or when one finishes sharpening and putting on set, what measurement should the set be? Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, Bill, um, I'm going to answer your the simplest question first. Uh, and I hope you're not an engineer because I really think if you are, you're not going to like my answer. But um, so in terms of when is a digital measuring device used um, in my shop, never. Um, I don't use a digital measuring device. I don't measure set um, everything that when I set a saw, everything is done by test cutting and testing out the saw. Um, and really what it comes down to is how does that saw perform for you? Is, it, is the, the saw sloppy in the curve? Does it rattle around? Does it bind or does it cut and track a line nice and straight? When it cuts and tracks a line nice and straight, then you know that that saw is set properly. When it, if it rattles around and tends to drift in the cut, it probably has too much set. And if it binds or vibrates on the backstroke, it probably doesn't have quite enough set. And I'm going to show you an example of each one of those in a second. Um, but I just want to be clear that um, measuring set doesn't really help a whole lot. Because if, you, if I were to tell you, for example, to put on uh, you know, 20 thousandths of set on your dovetail saw, well, that 20 thousandths of set may not be enough for a rip saw. And it might be, you know, it might be good for a tenon saw, but maybe it's not enough for, maybe it's too much for a dovetail saw. So um, there's so many factors that are going to go into the, the quote unquote measurement of set, the numeric measurement of set, because you've got the saw blade thickness to account for, uh, the size of the teeth, the material and thickness of the material you're working in, the type of material you're working in, because Sometimes hardwoods and softwoods require a different set on a saw. Um, so there, there's just so many variables that putting a number on it isn't really going to tell you a lot. It just doesn't mean much. Uh, instead, the empirical evidence, the empirical, uh, you know, what, what you see when you use the saw, that's really going to tell you whether or not that saw is set up right. So I'm going to th uh, show you three examples of a saw that doesn't have enough set. Uh, one that is set too much, and then of course the, the one that I think is just perfect, just right, um, which is going to be my personal crosscut saw that I use on a day in, day out basis. And I'm going to do this with three crosscut saws so you can see the difference with three of the same types of saw. But keep in mind that um, these principles are going to apply whether you're talking about a rip saw, joinery saw, crosscut saw, it doesn't really matter. Whether the set is too little, too much, or just right um, is really going to depend on the saw you're using and the type of cut and the wood you're cutting in. But um, once I show you what the three look and feel like, you'll be able to apply those uh, principles to any saw in your collection. And it won't matter whether it's a rip saw, cross cut saw, tenon saw, sash saw, dovetail saw, turning saw, whatever. Um, it all go it's all going to apply exactly the same. So let's take a look at three different saws. All right. So I'm going to apologize in advance. I did not have a chance to, to freshly sharpen these three saws. But I'm going to show you three different examples of a, of a saw that has too much set, too little set, and set that is just right. So let's start with one that's got too much set. And again, we're talking about crosscut saws. Now you may even be able to see, uh, I don't know how that's going to come through on the camera, but you may even be able to see how much set this saw has. These teeth are really set quite wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making a cut with this saw. And the first thing you're going to hear, you're going to see how, how, um, aggressive that saw sounds. It, it really sounds like it's taken a, a lot of wood. And that's because it is. Now, what the other thing you're going to notice on this saw is that because these teeth are set so unevenly, you see how hard that is for me to pull that out? Because these, te these teeth are set very unevenly. So there's some areas where there's more set than others. So what's happening is 
I start to saw and I get to a point where back here at the heel end of the saw, the teeth are set even more. So I can force it through and I can make this cut. But you can see this saw is not performing very well. And, and I want, to, want you to see what else is happening. Can you see how much that blade can move in that kerf? If I put that blade in there, see how much wobble there is in that. That's because that saw is set way too much. Now, I'm sawing pretty straight here, and that's because I'm controlling the cut. But if I were to let this saw go, there's a good chance it could drift quite a bit because there's just so much set in there. I mean, you can see the thickness of that kerf. Let's look at one now that's not set enough. Now the first thing you'll notice, now this, this saw is not, again not sharpened, but the first thing you're going to notice is right from the outside of the cut, it feels tight. See how it's binding? And I really have to, I'm really struggling to push this saw through the cut. Ugh. Okay? You can tell it's, it doesn't want, it just doesn't want to go. There's just not enough set in there. Now, of course, the saw doesn't move around in the curve, but that's basically because these teeth have almost no set in them at all. And so the thickness of the blade is the only thing um, you have. There's no clearance for that thickness of the blade. And it just won't go. It's just, it's binding up and it's getting tight. Now, sometimes uh, if you put a little bit of set in this, what you'll find is on the back stroke, you'll get this, you'll get that. The saw blade on the backstroke will tend to do that kind of thing. It'll, it'll vibrate back and forth. That's another sign that you don't quite have enough set. Now, let me move these two saws out of the way. Let's go to a saw that's set up properly. If I take this saw, the cut should start very easily. It should track straight, but look how little movement there is in that in the curve. Let me see if I can get a close up, uh, something closer with the camera. Okay, see how little movement. See how little movement there is there. So there's just enough clearance in there that maybe you might be able to slide a small shim. Um, and there's just enough clearance in there for the saw blade in a very little bit of movement, but the saw is going to it's going to track straight on its own okay and it it does there's very little movement in the blade between the kerf that's what we're looking for i should be able to basically saw with just a couple of fingers Okay, the saw blade slides through nice and easy, doesn't bind, but it's not sloppy. Okay, let's go back to one of the other saws. See, sorry for the shaky camera. There's that first kerf that I talked about. Let's put this blade back in there. And again, see how much slop there is in that. You see how much that blade can move. See how wide that kerf is. Okay, that's a saw that's overset. So there you go, from left to right, a saw that is set properly, a saw that is binding up too much uh, and not set enough, and one that is overset. And you can see the difference in the size of the curves. So Bill, I hope that answers your question. Uh, as you can see, it, there's really no uh, science, there's no engineering to it. I'm sure you could put numbers on it, but you would really have to figure out those numbers for every different saw in your collection. And as I said before, this could differ even for different types of wood. If you saw a lot of really hardwoods like oak um, and maple, the set that's required in your saws might be different than what is required in, say, pine. Um, pine, you know, tends to be tends to need a little bit more set in a lot of cases than um, than a very hardwood. But at the same time, some hardwoods 
if you have got some reaction wood in there, that kerf may want to close up and you may need a little bit more set, or you may just have to pull the saw out and start to cut over again after the kerf starts to close up and widen the kerf that way. So there's so many things that go into how much set is necessary um, that you really can't put a number on it. And again, the size of the blades, the thickness of the blades, the type of saw and the job that you're doing with it are all gonna factor into that. So my recommendation is to experiment. Do something like what I just showed here. Take your saw and see how it feels in the cut. Does it have a lot of movement in the curve? If so, pass a file down either side once or twice to lessen the amount of set that's in those teeth. Try this cut again. If it starts to bind, then you know, well, maybe I took a little bit too much off and you might need to add a little, little bit of set back. And unfortunately, it's really gonna be a trial and error process until you find a sweet spot for your particular saw and the woods that you tend to use. But that's why I recommend really learning to file and set your saws yourself because um, you've got nothing to lose but time in those cases. And uh, you know, a couple scraps of wood just to test things out until you can dial it in just right for the work that you're going to do and the woods that you're going to use.